So welcome back to our second part of lesson 3.3 when we're learning about complex numbers and how to use them. So in yesterday's lesson, we talked about the idea that Rene Descartes introduced with the imaginary number. And he said to review that if I squared is equal to negative 1, then that must mean that the square root of i squared is equal to the square root of negative 1, or that simply i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So that puts into place a new kind of number in our system. That number becomes a complex number. Now a complex number does not just need to be an imaginary number but it might also have a real component and an imaginary component. So you can see in this example here that I have this number that is 8 plus 4i. The real component of this number would be the 8, and the imaginary component would be the 4i. Together, this makes a complex number. Now, any number in our number system can be made into a complex number. So if I'm just talking about the number 5, we can actually write this as a complex by number by writing it as 5 plus 0i. Now, does it make sense to do that? Probably not, but in this case, it now looks like that complex idea with the real number first and the imaginary part second. All right, so we did a lot of problems yesterday simplifying imaginary numbers and radicals. Now we're going to learn how to do some operations with them. So our first example is to find the values of x and y that make this equation true. Now remember that complex numbers are a part, part of it is the real part, the other part is the imaginary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up the same components. So I'm going to match up the real part of the left side of the equation with the real part on the right side of the equation because the real part typically should be written first. So you can see the idea here is that I'll have 2x set equal to negative 14. So I set the real parts equal to the real part. Well, that makes this simple, and that gives me that x is equal to negative 7. So now I'm going to look at the imaginary component to this complex number. So the imaginary component is always the second part. So now I'm going to come over here and set those equal to each other. So I have y sub i is equal to negative 3i. Now, since I have an i on both sides, I'm going to go ahead and cancel those i's or divide them out. And that simply gives me that y is equal to negative 3. So if I plug that negative 7 back into the first, 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And if I plug that negative 3 in for y, that gives me negative 3y. And you can see that now that makes those two complex numbers match. All right, let's try another one like this. So this one says, find the values of the x and y that make the equation true. Again, we have two complex numbers being set equal to each other. So I'm going to match the real piece to the real piece. Those are always our first numbers or our first part. So that makes 3x equal to 15. And then I'm going to match the imaginary piece to the imaginary piece. So that's going to give me negative yi is equal to 2i. And then I'm going to solve those. So divide both sides by 3. That gives me x equals 5. That's the real part. Now I'm going to the imaginary part, and I'm going to cancel an i on both sides. That will leave me with negative y is equal to 2. When I divide both sides by negative 1, I get y is equal to negative 2. So this becomes my real part. This becomes my imaginary part of my complex number. Okay, now let's use these in operations. So 
what I have here is the addition and subtraction of complex numbers. So for my first example, it is addition. So just like I did in the equations, and I set my real part equal to my real part, I'm going to add the real parts together. So 3 plus 2, it's kind of like collecting like terms. 3 plus 2 is 5. I'm collecting my real part. And 5i plus a negative 4i is going to be plus positive i. So my new complex number would be 5 plus i, the real part, the imaginary part. Okay, for my second example, it's subtraction. Now I need to be careful here when I have subtraction because I want to end up subtracting everything in this grouping. So that might change some signs around. So that gives me 4 minus 6i, and I'm going to distribute that negative. That will give me negative 3 plus 7i. Now I can go ahead and collect my like terms. 4 minus 3 is positive 1, and negative 6i plus 7i is positive 1i. So my new complex number is 1 plus i. Now let's look at how that works with multiplication. So with multiplication, I have 3 plus 2i times 4 minus 3i. So it really looks like I have two binomials being multiplied together. Now for that reason, I'm going to treat those like binomials and I'm going to use the FOIL process so that I'm distributing all of the numbers throughout the multiplication problem. So when I use my FOIL, I'm going to multiply my firsts together, which give me 12, my outsides, which give me negative 9i, my insides give me 8i, and my lasts give me negative 6i squared. Now, when we go to collect our like terms, you might remember that rule that I told you to write down yesterday that we never want to leave i to a power. So what I want to do is I want to fix that i squared because we know that i squared is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to make that i squared be negative 1. And I'm also going to collect my like terms. So this is what I have right now. I have 12. I'm going to collect my like terms and make that negative 1i and I'm going to have a negative 6 times negative 1. So this piece here becomes a positive 6. So now I have 12 plus 6, and my imaginary part is negative 1. So one more calculation takes me to 18 minus i. So after I've multiplied two complex numbers, you can see that I made it down to ending with just a complex number. There's my real part, there's my imaginary part. Let's try one more. I'm gonna go ahead treat and treat this as FOIL. So firsts give me negative 10, outsides give me positive 14i, insides give me positive 5i, and lasts give me negative 7i squared. I'm going to do a quick change. I'm going to make this i squared be negative 1. When I do that, this is going to become a positive 7 because it's going to change that negative. So now I'll collect my real stuff. Negative, 7 plus, um, negative 10 plus 7 is negative 3 and 14i plus 5i is 19i. So you can see again, I'm left with a real part and an imaginary part. So, so far you've seen addition, you've seen subtraction, you've seen multiplication. Now let's understand division. So in order to help us understand division, we need to review a concept that we did at the beginning of the chapter, which was factor the difference of squares.
Now you remember that I told you that this was a special case. Now this is a special case because this is one of the few times that just a binomial will factor into two more binomials. So when I factor this, this factors into x and x, 4 and 4, and because this is a minus, they have to be one of each signs. Now, you'll remember if I go backwards and I do my firsts, that gives me x squared. My outsides give me negative 4x. My insides give me positive 4x, which are always going to cancel when I have a true DOS. So you can see it come full circle. So that's what I'm often trying to do. I'm trying to get my I terms or my imaginary terms to cancel when I divide. So in order to do that, I have to use the difference of squared factors. Now these factors, your book doesn't actually name these yet until we get into simplifying radicals, but what we're, these are gonna be called are conjugates to each other because when I multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate, it's going to get rid of my imaginary terms. All right, so let's see what all, what I'm actually talking about. So in this division problem of complex numbers, I have a 5i divided by the complex number 3 plus 2i. Now what I'm going to need is I'm going to need to get rid of the i in the divisor. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to recognize this guy's conjugate. So his conjugate is the opposite of the difference of square. So if he's a 3 plus 2i, the conjugate is 3 minus 2i. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply take this division problem and multiply by 1. Now that might seem crazy, but if I multiply it by one, it's not going to change it. But I'm actually gonna multiply it by a complicated version of one. I'm going to use the idea of the conjugates so that I can get rid of those imaginary numbers. All right, so let's watch this unfold. So let me clear all of this out of here so that you can have a good idea of what I'm doing. I'm gonna take five i, is being divided by 3 by 2i, and I'm going to multiply this by 1, but I'm choosing the conjugate as my fraction. Now notice I'm taking the whole thing over itself, so that is multiplying by a complicated version of 1 using the conjugate. All right, now when I do that, on top I'm going to distribute the 5i, so that's going to give me 15i minus 10i squared. Let's leave that alone for a second. On the bottom, I'm going to FOIL. Well, when I FOIL, I have 9, I have minus 6i, I have plus 6i, and I have minus 4i squared. Now, if I use the correct conjugate, my outers and inners are going to cancel and that's what I need to happen. Now when I go to collect my like terms I'm going to take any i squareds that I have left and replace them with negative ones. So this is going to be replaced with a negative one and this is going to be replaced with a negative one. So that's going to give me on top 15i Negative 10 times negative 1 is going to be positive 10. On the bottom, my outers and inners canceled. I'm going to have 9, and a negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. So that's going to give me 13 in the denominator. I'm going to switch around the real to the imaginary, and then I'm going to, going to break apart. So I'm going to have 10 divided by 13 plus 15 13 i's. So you can see after I did my division, I ended up with a real number and an imaginary number, which is my complex number.
All right, so let's look at another example that would have division of complex numbers. Now this one's a little bit cut off, but this one says four minus i divided by five i. Now since there is not two terms on the bottom, it's only one term, I'm only dividing by the imaginary part. I don't have to use the conjugate because there's no conjugate of 5i. So I'm simply going to multiply the top and the bottom of this guy by an i. And you're going to see the pieces separate apart. So I'll distribute that to the top. 4i minus i squared all divided by 5i squared. I'll go ahead and replace all of my i squareds with negative ones. So that gives me on top 4i minus a negative one or 4i plus one. On the bottom I'll have five times negative one which is negative five. Now I'm gonna go ahead and split this apart. At the same time that I split it apart, I'm gonna put the real part first. So I'll have one divided by negative five, which is negative one fifth, and I have four i divided by negative five, so that becomes negative four fifths i. So you can see the real part and the imaginary part of the complex number. All right, if you understand and you're ready to move on, you can go to Google Classroom for your assignment. If you need another example of each of these division problems, I'm going to give that to you now. So this gives us 3i plus the binomial, it's the complex number, 1 plus i, not really a binomial, but it looks like it is. So for this one, I'm going to use the conjugate. This time, the conjugate of my denominator is going to be the opposite, which is 1 minus i. So as I do to the top, I'm going to do to the bottom. On top, that's going to give me 3i minus 3i squared. On the bottom, I'm going to do a quick foiling. Now notice that I use the conjugate. I know my outers and inners are going to cancel. So I really just need to multiply my firsts and my lasts together. Now I'm going to do a quick removal of, removal of all my i squareds. That's going to become negative 1 times negative 3 will make this a positive 3. The removal of this i squared becomes a negative 1 and this minus a negative 1 will become a plus 1. So now I have on top 3i plus Three, and on the bottom I have 1 plus 1 or 2. I'm going to correctly separate and put my real portion first. 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 i. That's my complex number. In this last example, notice I only have the imaginary part. There's no real part, so I don't need to use the conjugate. I'm just going to multiply the top and the bottom simply by i. I don't have to use 2. That 2 is allowed to stay there because it's real. So on top, that gives me 3i plus 2i squared. On the bottom, that gives me 2i squared. Go ahead and replace those negative or those i squareds with negative 1. So that's going to make this a negative 2 and that's going to make this a negative 2. I'm going to go ahead and separate. So negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1, and then 3 divided by negative 2 is minus 3 halves i, noticing that I put the real part first and the imaginary part second. Okay, I hope this helped give you a couple extra examples to see the conjugate and the imaginary numbers being divided one more time. Have a great day.